Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Rada Lessons. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I really do appreciate it. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over my wife's five favorite niche perfumes. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I start off the video, I do wanna apologize if I'm not as joyful as I usually am. This is like my fifth or sixth time shooting this video. Uh, the first time there was a loud fire truck outside of the window and then my dog started barking and then you can hear noises from upstairs and outside this room. And so this is like my sixth time filming it, but I'm gonna try to get through without an interruption here. So uh, these are my wife's five favorite niche perfumes that she likes to wear on herself. So just to clarify, because I'm sure a few people watching this video are probably going to think that these are her five favorites that she likes to smell on me. That is not the case. So just to clarify, these are going to be somewhat feminine leaning. Uh, some of these are actually marketed for women. Uh, a lot of these I think are kind of unisex, uh, but my wife loves to smell them on her. And so my wife is not the kind of person who would go to a niche boutique and actually spend hours there smelling through fragrances just to try to narrow down what her one or two favorites are, usually she takes my recommendations. And so if I say, hey, you should probably try this one, I think you'll like it. She tries it, she will wear it once or twice. And if she doesn't like it, then she won't wear it again. <laughs> but uh, these are all fragrances that she ended up really loving. And so that says a lot because 90% uh, of fragrances that she smells, uh, she doesn't like. And so she's very picky, she's very selective. And so with that being said, I also wanna mention that these are all fragrances that were purchased by me. I apologize for the passive voice construction, but uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get into the list. So the number five fragrance in this list is one that she's worn half of. I mean, she got through 50% of her bottle, literally. I will show you the bottle now. And this one is a Ventus for her. And as you can tell, when I tilt it over to the side, make it symmetrical, she's actually worn half of it. So this is one that she loves and I love to smell on her, so that's good news. And this one, Creed Aventus for her, is one that when it originally came out, a lot of people were comparing it to the Aventus for him DNA. And I actually also did a video of this fragrance with my wife. I'm gonna leave a link down below and a card up here. If I remember, I never remember. But uh, this is one that kind of has like this black currant note. It's juicy, it's fruity, it's a little floral. There's a hint of sweetness and a musky base. It's a fruity floral fragrance, but it's done in a unique way and it doesn't really smell like anything else. So kudos to Creed for putting out a fragrance that is completely unique. I'm sure it was many, many years in the works, but um, anyways, I really enjoyed this one. But this is one that my wife likes to wear on more formal occasions and I completely agree with that. I think given the price point as well, this one is quite pricey. I actually did pick this one up at a discount, uh, but this is a fragrance that my wife likes to wear on, and this is my second bottle of of it too by the way and so one of them was actually sent to me by my good friend Shaheen who has a website uh, called sensplit.com the other one I ended up purchasing because my wife decided she was going to wear so much of it that she needed a backup bottle and so I found one at a good price online and I ended up purchasing it for her but uh, she likes to wear this one formally I really do enjoy this one I like the men's version as well the men's version I actually wore on my wedding day and all throughout my honeymoon and so it definitely has that sentimental appeal for me number four on this list is one that my wife likes to wear seasonally and so this is one that she typically doesn't wear outside of the summer months she actually got really mad at me because I actually like displaying this one right behind me here because it fits on the shelf perfectly and so sometimes I'll, I'll end up taking it back from our house because I actually uh, this location here is not my house this is an off-site location my quote-unquote studio and so my wife does get upset at me whenever I take the fragrance just to display it here she goes when are you gonna bring it back so anyways everybody knows it's a Tom Ford fragrance now and this one is Soleil Blanc and so this kind of gives off this suntan lotion sort of a vibe and I think it reminds her of the smell of coconut which is why she likes it so much so one of her favorite fragrances that she originally fell in love with was Harajuku Lovers G, which is the Gwen Stefani fragrance. And so she kind of came up with that line and uh, she loves that fragrance so much. And so it's discontinued now. It's kind of hard to find if you guys ever think of a, uh, or if you ever find a place where you can purchase those fragrances, I would love to know so I can buy her some backup bottles because she was obsessed with that. But I ended up purchasing this one for her. She loves it. 
uh, but it is one that she doesn't like to wear outside of the summertime because it has those tropical florals that are very reminiscent of the summertime. So the number three fragrance on this list might not be much of a surprise to you guys. Uh, it's actually another Creed fragrance. And if you've been watching my channel, uh, you probably know that on our wedding day, we actually both wore Creed, not because I'm a huge fan of the house or anything like that. I mean, I guess they're one of my favorite niche brands, but uh, I wouldn't say they're my favorite niche brand, but um, we both wore a Creed fragrance and we got married before this fragrance came out. And so had this fragrance been around when we got married, she probably would have worn this one, but she actually likes this one a little bit more you'll see that she hasn't worn as much of it uh, just because this is one that she likes to wear either like on an anniversary or a really special occasion because for her whenever she smells it she's reminded of our wedding day which I hope for her is a really special moment but uh, this one is also by Creed and it's Aqua Fiorentina so this happens to be one of my favorite perfumes for women ever uh, as a matter of fact I think I I did a top 10 favorite women's fragrances video and this one made it to the number one spot and I really love this one. This is like a niche version of Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana. Obviously they don't smell identical, maybe they're like 80% similar but this one the quality of ingredients or the balance of ingredients is a little bit better and so I personally love this fragrance and it's one that I will spray on my skin as well. Maybe you know, once or twice a year just because I want to smell it and I love the way that it smells. Unfortunately, like I said, my wife doesn't wear it a little bit more often than she should, but I'll see what I can do. I'll try to encourage her to wear it more often. Maybe if we're going on like a special date in Manhattan or something like that. The number two fragrance on this list is one that my wife is on her fourth bottle of. I tried buying her some inspirations of this fragrance or clones to put it bluntly. Um, and she, she does like the clones, I will admit, but there's just something about this fragrance where she likes the original more than anything else. And I know this is one that's kind of polarizing in the community. A lot of people say it smells like pickle juice, which is a weird comparison because I personally don't get that. But for the people who do get that, it's a, it's a rather um, apt comparison, I would say. But this is a fragrance that I, let's see, when did I buy this one? So this one was October 19th of 2019. And, um, this is Santal 33. And so the one that I purchased before this one was on Christmas, a little bit before Christmas day of 2018. And then I purchased another one in 2017, but I think I originally purchased this fragrance in like 2013 or something like that. So this is the fourth bottle of Santal 33. And this is my wife's favorite scent to wear on a regular basis. And so the number one in here uh, is one that I purchased recently for her and she loves it. But this is one where if she had the opportunity to just have a fragrance that she wore every single day, this would be it. Truth be told, she does like to wear this a little bit more in the winter. And I think right around the winter time, if she's running really low, she'll say to me, hey, can you please go and buy me another bottle of this fragrance, which I always do. And by the way, if you do bring this back to Le Labo, they will give you a 20% discount if you get your bottle refilled. I actually forgot the old bottle of this at home, so I had to pay full price, but no big deal. My wife really, really loves this one. And so I know that right around the holidays, this is always going to be a Christmas gift because I know a lot of times us guys have a hard time thinking of what to buy our wives or significant others. And so this is one where I know if I buy this for her every Christmas, uh, she's gonna be happy, but uh, she loves this one. Sandalwood, papyrus, a few other aromatic notes in there, really unique scent. And it's one of the most cloned scents out there now. So getting into the number one uh, spot here, I actually paid a visit to my friend near a guy uh, who lives in um, Pennsylvania and he has a boutique called Perfumology. So I ended up purchasing this one from Perfumology like three or four weeks ago. I don't quite remember how long ago exactly it's been that I went, uh, but I remember seeing comparisons between this one and another fragrance by Michael Kors that my wife used to wear religiously. And when I saw that this was considered to be like the niche version of Michael Kors for her, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and buy this one. And my, I felt bad because I was at Perfumology. I spent a couple hours there. My wife was in the hotel room with our daughter and she was just sitting on the bed watching movies. 
And so I said, you know what, I really need to buy this fragrance uh, for my wife and I think that this is one that she's gonna end up really enjoying. And she ended up buying it right after we got back to the hotel room from dinner and uh, she loves this one so much. She wears this one every single day now. And the good thing about this one is that it's extract the parfum concentration. So you don't really need to wear more than two or three sprays and it lasts the whole day. And so this one by Nasomato is called Narcotic Venus. This one has a little bit of that floral component. It's a little sharp, it's not aldehydic. But what I love about this one, and I haven't looked up the notes, and truth be told, the perfumer Alessandro Gottieri does not reveal notes for any of his fragrances. And so even if you do look online for notes, it's really speculation. Uh, they're not accurate notes provided by the brand. Uh, but there's definitely something in here that reminds me of Michael Kors for her. I don't know if it's Freesia or Narcissus. It's one of those two. And it's a note that I'm not typically a fan of, but like there's this resinous sweetness underneath that I get hints of whenever she wears it and it's amazing. And as the name implies, it has a narcotic feel to it. It's really, really good. If you haven't tried this one, definitely check it out. I don't know if I like it more than Nudiflorum though. So that's one of the most recent fragrances by Nasamato. It's not one that my wife likes. You know, it's a weird fragrance because Women think it's too masculine, men think it's too feminine. Um, but anyways, this one is amazing. Narcotic Venus by Nasomato. If you haven't tried this one, definitely check it out. Full disclosure, not one that I would like to wear on myself. The only one from this, the only ones I should say that I personally wouldn't mind wearing are these two. And maybe this one just because of, I love how much it smells. But the ones that I would wear comfortably are these two. But these are my wife's five favorite niche perfumes and um, they didn't all come out in a specific year or anything like that so of all time these are her five favorite niche perfumes of all time all of these were purchased by me and uh, i think they all smell wonderful on my wife so there you have it ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for tuning in those were my wife's five favorite niche perfumes if you owner have tried any of these fragrances or any of the ones that i mentioned as i was going over these fragrances please let me know what you think go ahead and leave a comment down below also if this is your first time watching one of my videos and you took something of value from this video, I would love it if you could support my channel by subscribing to it. Just go ahead and click that red button in the corner and also make sure to enable notifications. This way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it will get delivered straight to your feed. You'll never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. And that includes top five or top 10 videos like this, fragrance reviews, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you all and I'll see you soon.